Hi, my name is David Morell, and I'm the author of Murder is a Fine Art. Uh, Thomas De Quincey is remembered these days because he was the person who first wrote about drug addiction, although in the Victorian era, uh, drug addiction was an unknown term. They called it a drug habit, and you weren't addicted to something, you just didn't have the moral character to stop taking the drugs, which in this case would have been opium, which uh, was mixed in a solution of alcohol, often brandy, uh, and it had a, uh, a wine color. Uh, and Thomas De Quincey was addicted to it. In, uh, for a normal person, uh, using it perhaps for a toothache or something, you know, it would be perhaps a quarter of a, of a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon, and uh, people knew it was pretty dangerous and had poison on the label. Uh, De Quincey uh, built up a tolerance to the opium alcohol combination and was drinking upwards of 16 ounces of this stuff a day. It's a miracle that uh, he didn't die from it. Uh, but it made him extraordinarily uh, brilliant in the way he wrote. I almost hate to say this because it encourages people to take drugs, but for him it worked and he was able to produce a very eerie uh, kind of fiction which uh, had theories which anticipated the theories of uh, Freud and the subconscious by 50 years. And the book he wrote about uh, drug addiction uh, was called Murder, uh, I'm sorry, it was called Confessions of an English Opium Eater. Murder is a Fine Art is the title of the novel. And uh, he uh, had a family, he had actually eight children, uh, and was always running around trying to evade uh, bill collectors because he was so, um, he was so used to paying money for, for the laudanum. Uh, one of his daughters was named Emily, and she was 21 years old when the novel takes place in 1854. And their relationship, you can imagine, if someone growing up with such a unique, crazy man in a way as Thomas De Quincey, uh, he would send her uh, through holes and fences and over walls and in back uh, windows of publishers in order to deliver a manuscript and then she'd come back with the money and crawl under fences and over walls and what have you. Uh, in order to give him the money uh, where he was hiding from the bill collectors and he'd give her enough to take back to his wife and the remaining seven children and then he'd go back to taking his drugs and writing. It's a very strange uh, existence but she learned from him an independence and a, uh, a, a open-mindedness if you like that was not common in the Victorian era. She was a, truly a very very extraordinary unusual to use the word again, independent thinking person. Uh, and in the novel, uh, Murder is a Fine Art, the two of them, the father-daughter combination, is, uh, is uh, not only emotionally rewarding, but she herself is also uh, very amusing in the way she's able to manipulate people into doing what she wants them to do.